In this screencast, I want to review recurrence relations and how to use the principle of mathematical induction to solve them and get a closed form solution that will be useful in terms of determining what their big O or big theta uh, performance is going to be. So some review of some important definitions here first. A recurrence relation is an equation that defines a sequence of values in terms of preceding terms. So the best way to think about this is, here's a, here's a simple example. The nth term of the sequence is 2 times the n minus first term, in other words, the previous term, plus 1. So if the initial condition, in other words, the starting point for the sequence, is t1 equals 1, then we'll start with 1, of course. And then we take that, multiply it by 2, and add 1. We get 3, multiply 3 by 2, and add 1. We get 7, etc. The closed form solution for this sequence is the function 2 to the n minus 1. If you're familiar with what the powers of 2 look like, namely um, 2, 4, 8, 16, you can guess at this function. So that's one possibility of finding a candidate solution. The other two possibilities which are shown, which are covered in other screencasts, are to use back substitution or the recursion tree method. But now the big question is, how do we prove that 2 to the n minus 1 is the solution to that recurrence relation? Well, to do that typically, not always, but many, many times, we use the principle of mathematical induction. So remember what that is. That's let p be some property of positive integers. In other words, some characteristic that's either true or false. And we, if, if we can show that the base case p1 is true, and we can show that if pk is true, then pk plus 1 is true, then pn is true for all positive integers. So intuitively, all this means is you've got p1, and you can show pn is true by just repeatedly, repeatedly applying the inductive step. So if p1 is true, then you know by the inductive step p2 must be true, then p3 must be true, then p4 must be true, etc. So the analogy for this is that you have a set of dominoes and they're lined up so that each domino will knock over the next, that's the inductive step, and by knocking over the first domino in the line, we are sure that all the dominoes will fall. Um, and so the principle of mathematical induction is just a formal way of saying that if we can have these two things, that p1 is true and then pk knocks over pk plus 1, then it's going to be true for all positive integers. So this is useful in lots of cases. Later on, we'll prove it, use it to prove correctness for some greedy algorithms and some other algorithms. But uh, for right now, we're just going to focus on finding and proving solutions for recurrence relations. So on this slide, let's consider the recurrence relation again that we were talking about, tn equals 2 times tn minus 1 plus 1, with the initial condition t1 equals 1. And we want to prove that, in fact, 2n minus 1 is a solution. So in other words, to find out um, what tn is for any n, we just plug it in, raise, raise 2 to that nth power, and then subtract 1. And that will give us the nth term in the sequence that's defined by this recurrence relation. So the proof, and the proof of these things all typically go in the following way. Prove the base step is true. So all I need to do is show that t1 is actually equal to uh, tn, our solution, so t2 to the 1 minus 1. So that's all this says. t1 is equal to 1, and that's the same as 2 to the 1 minus 1. Not much to that, and usually the base step typically is pretty close to that easy. And then the inductive step is true. This can be much more difficult, but in this case, it's not too bad. We want to show that if t n minus 1 is, satisfies this function, so in other words, this function gives you the right answer, 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1, then for t n, again, that function gives us the right answer. So all you do, again, this doesn't always work, but for many of the cases that we're going to study, it will. You write down t of n, write down the recurrence relation that that's equal to, 
and then look around and you look at it and you say, what is there a way to rewrite this now using what we know about the inductive hypothesis? So this first bit here in this conditional is what's called the inductive hypothesis. So we've got t n minus one. So if we're just going to plug in for that t two, I'm sorry, two to the n minus one minus one. So we just plug that in for t of n minus one, and so we've got two times that, and then we've still got the one comes down. And then, again, if you're lucky and the problem's not too difficult, you just simplify this as much as you can. So we just multiply it through. And so we get 2 times 2 to the n minus 1, that's 2 to the n, minus 2 from 2 times minus 1, and then we bring down the 1. And then, and then you can see that minus 2 plus 1 is just minus 1. So we've shown the base case here, and we've showed the inductive case. So by the principle of mathematical induction, we know the equation is true for all n, and this is a solution to the recurrence relation. So that gives us a formal proof so that we know... If we have a sequence that's defined by this recurrence relation, then a closed form solution is going to look like 2 to the n minus 1. Now, you can, re you can use this whole approach not only with recurrence relations, but also with structures that are defined recursively. And a couple of structures that we're going to come across uh, frequently in this course um, are on this page. A full binary tree... Um, sometimes called proper or two-tree, is a tree in which every node other than the leaves has two children. So in other words, it looks like this. Um, notice the leaves, of course, have zero children, but all the interior nodes, these three nodes, have two children. Now, the, there can, so there can be whole, different holes at different levels, etc., in an essentially complete binary tree, every level, except possibly the last, is completely filled in. Okay, so it's going to be full. And in addition, all the nodes in the last level are as far left as possible. So this is the data structure that you've seen in heaps. Okay, so all the levels are filled in. So it's full plus all the levels are filled in. And all the nodes in the last level are as far left as possible in the tree. And then another step, even more restrictive, is that what's called a complete uh, binary tree. And that's where every level is completely filled in. Okay. So be careful, though. I mean, this is the terminology that I will use in our course, but this varies from instructor to instructor, uh, textbook to textbook. So just be careful when you read any of these names to make sure that you've got the understanding, same understanding that the author has in trying to explain something. So let's see if we can find out something about complete binary trees. So you can define a complete binary tree recursively. So this sometimes is called structural recursion. Um, and we'll have a base structure that's a single vertex. And the inductive structuring situation is a root vertex with a left subtree and a right subtree, both of which must be complete binary trees and of the same height. So in other words, in this case, here's our root, okay? We have this complete binary tree of height 2, this complete binary tree of height 2. We attach them to the root, and bingo, we get another complete binary tree. So for this situation, uh, the number of vertices in a complete binary tree satisfies the recurrence relation. Well, just think about this structure here. We have a single vertex, and then we have two... Um, trees of one less height. And hence the number of vertices, which we need to show this, in a complete binary tree with n levels is going to be 2 to the n minus 1. Again, we know that because it satisfies this recurrence relation with this initial condition, and we just proved that this will be the closed form solution. Finally, I want to show that uh, merge sort is n log n. So basically, if you look at merge sort, and I've got a whole screencast on this that does it more carefully, but um, I just want to go through it quickly here because it's relevant to the solving recurrence relations. Uh, merge sort has a recurrence relation of Tn. There are two calls to merge sort on 
problems that are half the size, and then it merge can take up to n comparisons. We'll just assume it's going to be n, but it could be a little bit small. It can be smaller than n, um, depending on how um, the data is set up. And at t of one, and then namely, if there's only one thing in your data set, then you don't have to do any comparisons. So the claim is that t of n is equal to n log n. So to do this, I'm, again, I'm just doing a simplified case here. Um, we're going to assume that, uh, again, this is the recurrence relation, but we're only going to do it for n is a power of 2. In other words, n is equal to 2 to the k. Okay, so again, same recipe as we used uh, for the previous recurrence relation. Namely, prove the base step is true. So that's trivial here uh, because t of 1 is 0 and 1 times log of 1 is equal to 1 times 0, which is equal to 0. So indeed, the uh, proposed solution holds for t of 1, namely that t of n is equal to n log n. And so now we have to do the inductive case. So this is a little, it follows the same recipe, but the math may be a little bit harder for some folks to understand. So what we want to do is we want to show that if Tn over 2 satisfies our proposed closed form solution, then T of n works. The closed form solution works for T of n. And again, where we're going to assume that everything is just the power of 2 to make our lives simple. So here we go. Again, we just write down T of n. Then we apply the recurrence relation to see what we get. So we get 2 times t of n over 2 plus n. Then we take the inductive hypothesis, plug that in for t of n over 2. So because we know we're assuming it works for that. And so what do we get? We get n over 2 times log n over 2. And the n just comes down. And then we multiply this through. Well, 2 times n over 2 is clearly just n. And then we get log uh, n over 2, and then we have our plus n. So we can now rewrite this by factoring out the n, and we get log of n over 2 plus 1 by the distributive law. And then we just think, well, wait a minute. Everything's a power of 2, so the log of n over 2 plus 1 takes me up to the next power of 2. That's what log means. What's the power of 2? So that log of n over 2 plus 1 just gives us log of n, and we're done. So by the base inductive, the base inductive steps are true, and by the principle of mathematical deduction, the equation is true for all n. So hopefully uh, this um, review, I hope it's review for most of you, you should have taken, seen this in your discrete math structures course. But um, hopefully this is enough for you to feel comfortable with the recipe that we're going to use many times to solve recurrence relations and get a closed form solution.